Miles Beckler here, milesbeckler.com, and in this video, I'm gonna help you answer the question, why is Facebook not displaying my advertisements? I've seen a lot of comments in my videos and a lot of threads on some Facebook groups where people are attempting to display advertisements on Facebook, but for some reason, Facebook either isn't showing their ads or isn't spending all of their daily ad budget. This can be really frustrating if you're an advertiser on Facebook. I don't care if you're a new advertiser or if you've been around for a while, when you're trying to spend 100 bucks a day and Facebook's only spending 20, or when you're trying to run a split test on three or five different ads and Facebook's only showing one of them, maybe two of them, you can't effectively accomplish the goal that you've set out to accomplish. So I've kind of touched on the two scenarios in which this happens time and time again. We're gonna go a little bit deeper into both of those, talk about why the problem is occurring. More importantly, we're gonna talk about how to debug or fix that problem so you can get your displays because that's obviously the goal. So the first situation is an advertiser who has one ad set that has multiple advertisements inside of that ad set, whether it's three or five or eight different ads, for some reason, Facebook is only displaying one, maybe two of your ads. This is actually really common. And the reason is Facebook's trying to anticipate out of all of those advertisements that you've put up, Facebook's automatically trying to figure out which one is going to be the best user experience for the audience that you've targeted, right? Facebook is trying to make sure it doesn't display something that's going to give their users a poor user experience on Facebook, because if that happens, that user doesn't come back, they can't sell more advertisement, Facebook loses. So what Facebook's doing is they're looking in your ad set, right, in all the different ads that you've created, and they're like, ah, I think uh, one and three are the ones we're gonna show the other ones, meh, we're just not gonna show it. And that's totally normal. So what do you do? Because you obviously wanna split test your advertisements. Well, what you need to do in order to force Facebook to display all of your advertisements is you need to duplicate out your ad set and run one advertisement per ad set. So if you've got one main ad set right now that's got like a million people inside of the ad set and you're trying to run five different ads, what you'll do is you'll break it out and you can duplicate that ad set out five times. You put one unique advertisement in each of those ad sets. So each ad set has one ad. Then you divide your budget by five and you put that divided number, right? So let's say you were doing $100 per day, you would put $20 per day in each of the five ad sets. You're essentially distributing your budget and distributing your advertisements into five separate ad sets. If you had eight, do eight. The question comes up at this point, well, wouldn't I have overlapping audiences? The answer is kind of maybe, like obviously at some point you would, but you only need enough displays to see which one of those ads gets the highest click-through rate and the best cost per lead for you or cost per sale, whichever your KPI is. So you're not gonna be running it long-term in this structure. Short-term, I'm comfortable, I've done this many times and I'll run that same ad set, that same audience and I'll run it against each other. If you wanna make sure that people who liked or commented or clicked on ad set A don't see ad sets B through E, simply create a custom audience that is the people who have engaged on your posts and then exclude those individuals from all five of those ad sets. So if somebody clicks the angry face, if they comment, if they like, if they make any sort of engagement, including the read more button up top on the, the top text, then it would remove them so you won't be double displaying to those individuals. Um, this is how I would approach making sure that your split test data is solid because if you're running a split test, you need somewhat scientific data, right? You need five different ads to see the exact same amount of ad spin from a in very, very similar audience. This is why I don't like doing audience A for ad A, audience B for ad B, because you now have two variables in your setup. So I prefer to go with kind of a larger uh, audience size. If you're trying to do a split test, 500,000 to a million five, it depends on your niche. It's going to vary significantly. And then just break that up so each ad set has its own budget that 
cumulative, right? All of them added together, reach the daily spend that you want to spend. And then each of those ad sets has its own individual ad. This will give you true data. This will force Facebook to show your ad for all of those ad sets and you should be able to get all of your display going. So that's how you solve the first scenario. The second scenario is when you've set up an ad set, you've got one ad in your ad set and you're not getting any displays at all. And you've got everything, you feel like you've set everything up right, your campaign is set up, your ad set is set up, your audience is targeted, and then your advertisements in there. In this situation, I think it's the same problem. I think Facebook, for some reason, doesn't believe that your advertisement is going to create a positive user experience for Facebook users. Therefore, Facebook is kind of got you down at the lowest part of the auction. You're getting maybe the leftover ad spend between two in the morning and five in the morning in your targeted areas, which is like the worst time to spend your ad budget. So first of all, how do you know if this is going on? The first thing I want you to go look at is load that advertisement inside of your ad manager. Go load the advertisement in the data and look at your relevance score. Odds are, and I'll put my money on it because I'm a little bit of a betting man, I'd put my money on it that you're seeing somewhere between a four or lower in the relevant score. It would surprise me if you even have a six as your relevant score. And this is Facebook's feedback mechanism that's just showing you that Facebook doesn't believe that your audience is interested in what you're talking about. Now, this is the identifying kind of data point that confirms my suspicions. And just about every time I've had a little conversation in the comments with someone, this has been the situation. They're like, oh, my relevant score is a three or my relevant score is a two. So how do you get your relevant score to go up? Well, first, let's understand how that's calculated. Um, Facebook is an auction situation right? If you and I and 10 other people are all bidding on the same audience, there's going to be one winner. There's one person who has the best content and the best cost per click ready to be spent or cost per conversion or cost per thousand displays, whatever that, that kind of pricing mechanism is. But there's one person who actually wins the auction and they will get the best time slots and they will get the best traffic out of that audience. Everyone else who doesn't win the auction gets to kind of, to, to, feed on the scraps, if you will. And uh, unfortunately, this, this actually is the way that it works. So you, your goal should be to win the auction. And how do you know when you've won the auction when you see a relevant score of 10? So what is Facebook, Facebook factoring into this relevant score? Well, the first thing they're looking at is the audience. They're analyzing all of the people in the audience and they're analyzing the different interests and likes and demographic things that they know about this audience. Then they're looking at your ad copy. They're also looking at your image, everything to do with your advertisement they're checking out. And then they're going over to your landing page and they're actually reading the words on your landing page. And they're actually taking all of this data to figure out does this audience and this advertisement copy, this ad and this page they're going to, is that relevant? Because what they don't want to happen is they don't want clickbait to go through. They don't want certain topics to be advertised um, subtly, right? They don't want you to actually be advertising a dating site with an ad that doesn't really sound like a dating ad, but the landing page is clearly a dating site. In that kind of a situation, you're gonna get a terrible relevance score because the ad doesn't line up with the actual landing page. Therefore, they're gonna be kind of hindering your reach. The best way I like to create advertisements that get really good relevant scores is to put a lot of text above the image on the ad. So the ad main components, you got your image, that's the probably the biggest attention grabber. You have your headline that's directly below the image, that's the biggest, boldest text in your ad. Those are very limited into what you can put, but it's important above the actual image, that text field you can put in hundreds if not thousands of characters. I wrote one ad, it's, it's several hundred words long. Um, I don't know exactly how many words you can fit in there, but I like to tell stories in that situation. I like to get it to where users are clicking the read more button, the more button, they're reading the entire advertisement, I'm pre-indoctrinating them to my ideas, I'm pre-framing them through my ad copy to want what they're gonna see when they get to my landing page and when they get inside of my 
funnel. That way people who click the read more and the more button, they've engaged with my ad. That's a good signifier to increase my relevance score. They get down, they click on the link, they're ready to obtain that which I'm giving away in the top of my funnel. Facebook sees all of this process, including all of that top copy text that you create, and it creates a much better appearance of a more positive user experience for Facebook users on Facebook. Wow, that felt like a mouthful. I don't know if that was or not, but do you get what I'm saying here? So more copy, more relevant copy, tell stories, case studies, testimonials can work great in there and make sure that you're being really consistent, right? That the audience you're targeting is truly interested in that which you're offering and that you use almost identically, right? In my below the image in my advertisement, that headline text, I often put that text on my landing page. The main keywords, the verb, the adjective, the thing they're gonna get, the big promise, the hook, whatever you wanna call it, that needs to be the same from your advertisement to your landing page. And that needs to be something that Facebook thinks that the audience you're targeting is truly interested in. And that is how you will create a new ad that has a higher likelihood of getting a much higher relevance score. And when you start seeing eights, nines, and tens, your cost per action is gonna go down, your cost per display is going to go down, you're probably gonna be getting into better segments of Facebook's audiences at that point in time, and your cost per lead should go down and your conversion rates should go up. Those are the two biggest things. I keep seeing it over and over and over. Now, haha, I have a video to link people to when they ask this question, but you obviously found this video on your own, therefore, Go about doing and implementing what I've talked about here, whether you need to run your split tests and get full display on all five or three or seven, however many ads you're running, take that approach. Or if you're not getting any displays on the one and only ad you've got in there, now you know the trick to get a higher relevance score and monitor that relevance score. And you'll notice as that number goes up, you'll be getting more displays and you'll be able to spend all of your budget. I've never seen someone with a, a relevance score of an eight, nine or 10 not be able to spend their entire daily budget. Facebook has more users than we could ever spend money on. There's over 2 billion monthly users on Facebook. So there, there's plenty of spending on advertising to be had for all of us. We just need to make sure that Facebook, when they, when they analyze, and it's done with a bot at first, sometimes it goes to a human, but, but it's pretty much the bot is looking at your ad when you submit your ad, this is all automated. And that bot is deciding, yes, this is gonna create a good user experience, high relevance, no, this isn't really gonna create a good user experience, low relevance score. You might even see that a low relevance score, once you start to get some engagements, that number can go up. But if you're starting with a four, five, or six, I wouldn't sit on my hands and wait and hope that number goes up. I would be proactive. I would create new advertisements. I would test long copy up top ads. I think that's really the path. That's what's working for me. That's, work, that's what's working for my friends who I've helped kind of improve their kind of situation and their Facebook advertising, it really works. So now you know you're on the inside track. I thank you very much for your time. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up here on YouTube. It helps me get the reach out and that's my only goal here. You notice no real call to action other than a thumbs up. I get that's a call to action. Uh, and hey, here's another call to action. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, give me a subscribe, get the newest videos when they come out. My goal in life right now is to become the most helpful internet marketer on YouTube. So I promise to deliver more value every time I publish a video. That's my goal, that's what I'm doing. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad we've connected. I hope this helps you improve your Facebook advertising. Have any questions, hit me in the comments and I will catch you on the next video. Until then, be well.